Brenning turns, here's the pitch, ground ball, pass Nelson, base hit, Whitaker's coming, the throw will be late, the Bird Stormers win. Hello and welcome to Stormers on Deck here on BRC 11, where we spend some time off the field with members of the Lancaster Barnstormers. I'm Brian Cash, Chad Landers is going to join us a little later. Three members of the 2017 squad are ready and waiting to field our questions, but before we get to that, we're going to increase your Barnstormer knowledge with our trivia question of the week. Who holds the team's all-time record for runs batted in in a single game? The total is seven, and it happened on June 3rd, 2009. We will have the answer for you later in the show, so stay tuned. We'll introduce our first Barnstormer coming up after the break. Welcome back to Stormers on Deck. It's been a new look season for this team in 2017. An entirely new coaching staff made up of first year coaches. But right now, let's send it over to Chad Landers, who's at Clipper Magazine Stadium. Hey, Chad. Thanks, Brian. Well, I'm standing here with the first year manager of the Lancaster Barnstormers, Ross Peoples, but he's not a stranger to the ballpark here as you've spent uh, most of your entire career here in the Atlantic League playing for the Stormers and you're recently on the coaching staff. And now that you're in charge, you get to be on shows like this. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Let's get right to it. Um, when you found out you were going to be the new manager of the Lancaster Barnstormers, how did that come about and, and what was the feeling there? Uh, well, it was, I actually, you know, sighting, you know, great, you know, blessed, you know, I guess every word you can picture that's good, but it, you know, it was kind of, the, they made a decision that they weren't going to bring Butch back and uh, Bob Zuckerman contacted me and, you know, want to know if I wanted to interview for the job and I know they interviewed uh, a couple other guys as well. Um, so, you know, I, I did. I was excited for that. Just the opportunity to interview was made me made me happy. But, you know, then when they, you know, offered it to me and I accepted it, you know, I was, you know, very excited about it to, you know, first, you know, get your coaching staff going to, you know, sign your players and create your own team. You know, that's the fun part of it. Yeah, and you've been around Butch Hobson for many years. Is there one technique that you've taken from him that you really tried to hold true here with your, you know, your coaching uh, legacy? I, I think one is just understand that, you know, it's just a ball game. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. He's a, he's a more of a, cares more about the players than he does actually the outcome. And I think I really took that into effect because, you know, going through a course of a year, you know, some guys, you know, their wives are pregnant or let's say a death comes in the family and he's he was very grateful to you know let them go home to see the birth of their kid or you know visit the funeral, whatever it might be you know he was very good about that and that it really hit home for me because it you know it makes you think that you know there's there's a lot more other things than just baseball for sure now when the season started you guys were on the road started off 0-4 but then you've kind of been on a nice run here and I've actually jumped into first place you've been enjoying that for for a big part of the season how's that been and kind of what was that roller coaster ride for you well, we planned that we planned to start 0-4 like that and come back <laughs> well I mean you know obviously we go out to you know win every game but you know we actually face Somerset the first series of the game and I mean series season and you know, Somerset's always a great team. You know, they always scrappy. We didn't have much luck in that game. And, you know, we had to, you know, reach down and, you know, pretty much just, you know, we knew it was early. We knew this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And, you know, we just, after that series, we met like we did for the second series. And, hey, it's behind us, and we're going to go from there. We, we knew after the first four games there was only one way to go, and that was up. <laughs> <laughs> right, and you went all the way up into the division lead. It's got to be a nice right. feeling. And one of your strengths is your hitters. I mean, you've assembled a list of hitters like Blake Galen, Casey Hobson, Caleb Gindel, and, and Sean Halton, and even this Darian Sanford guy. I mean, just talk about all the hitters you have and what a, what a positive it is to have well, such offense. I think, you know, I think we did a pretty good job of, you know, building a mix you know we wanted to, we knew we wanted to upgrade bring some more speed uh we knew we wanted some contact guys guys that can maybe hit and run a little bit this and that we also wanted some power so you know actually you know three of the guys was in camp with somebody and got released that was here last year so you know, it was a no-brainer to bring them back and you know i think we got a very good mix and not only a good mix of players but good mix of you know human beings as well to make the clubhouse a lot 
you know, better because a lot of stuff that goes on in the clubhouse, you know, translated out to the field. It does seem like you guys are gelling really well on the field, which is nice, and, and you've had a consistent, uh, you know, amount of guys here that haven't been called up yet, which is also probably nice. Talk about uh, just being in front of the Lancaster fans. This is, what, the 13th season for the Barnstormers? So these fans certainly have been very supportive of this team. You've been with this team for most of that run. So, you know, obviously you're a huge supporter of the, the fans here. Talk about that to everyone. Well, and, uh, you know, all my years of baseball, I think this is one of the better sets of people, of fans. They're very supported. They're always coming out. You, I mean, you got your a good group of true fans, as I like to call it. They're going to be here. You know, every game, the whole game, you know, and, you know, they just love baseball around here. So, you know, it's always good to see, you know, obviously when you can come to a nice stadium like this. So it's good for baseball and it's good for Lancaster. And it's, you know, good for the players to the coaches because, you know, everybody wants to play in front of fans. Yeah, they have commented on that. Yeah, everybody wants to play in front of fans and, you know, it's amazing just to see sometimes the other stadiums we might go to or whatever that don't have as much, just the energy <laughs> that just the fans bring to the, yeah. to our, to the game, to the team, you know, however you want to look at it. What, when you talk about goals for the season to these guys, what do you, what do you say to them? You know, what's the, what's the picture, the focus here for the team? Well, you know, I, I, I always tell them, you know, as far as when you come to this league, people that are first timers in this league that, you know, one thing that about the Atlantic League is you play to win every game. Every game counts. You know, in affiliated ball, sometimes it's more of, you know, prospect-wise to you're learning something or somebody's setting a lineup for you or this guy's got to throw here. And, you know, it can be more of a business. You know, and here you play the game, you play every game to win. And, you know, every game counts and, you know, that's what makes it fun, you know, and that's what makes, because a lot of them guys come from affiliated, they get to see the business side of things a little bit of the money the guy got from getting drafted or however many years he gets, you know, because he was a high pick or whatever you want to say, but just to be, just to be here and play in the game to win every single game. And, you know, I go every year is to get to the playoffs and win a championship. You know, obviously goal is to get them out of here as well, because that's an obviously, you know, the number, number one goal for them. So you got to, you know, you try to help that in every way you can, but also, you know, to get to the playoffs and win a championship. And that would be three for the Barnstormers if that were to happen. That's right. It would be three. What, 06, 14, and 17, right? That would be a lot of fun. I'm sure the fans are rooting for that. Got to thank you for joining us. Uh, oh, absolutely. You know, as you're in your first year here managing the Barnstormers, we really appreciate it. Good luck heading into the All-Star break, which is coming up, and obviously would one of the main goals there is to win the first half title so that you're into the playoffs. That's right. That's one thing good about this league is it's two halves. So, uh -huh. you know, if you do have a bad half somewhere, you can always regroup. So I appreciate you having me. I enjoy it. Always appreciate seeing you all out here. Yeah, thanks for coming on to the show. We'll have more on Stormers on Deck coming up next. Another member of the Lancaster Barnstormers will be right back. We're back here on Stormers on Deck. It's time to go deep into the outfield roster and uh, have a chat with fan favorite Blake Galen uh, back on the show for season number two here, Blake. So thanks for joining us again. My pleasure. And as always, welcome back to the Barnstormers. Uh, have played a lot here for the Barnstormers. Sixth year with the ball club. Seems like you really like playing here at Clipper Magazine Stadium. What do you feel like is just keeps drawing you back to this team? Uh, there's a lot of things. Uh, one is the support from the fans. Uh, one is the right field wall. <laughs> um, no, but seriously, this, this, this league is part of it, too. Um, great league, great league for exposure. I've had success getting out of here and, um, you know, using this league as a stepping stone. And that's really what it's all about. So um, there's no reason to, to go anywhere else. And this has been my summer home for, like you said, the last six years. And I'm um, very grateful for that. And well, it has certainly worked out for you because you have been able to be here long enough to accumulate some uh, healthy statistics. Uh, the career leader for the Barnstormer is in home runs, doubles if I'm correct, and now hits. So what does that feel like to, to have accomplished all of that in your career here, and, and how was that all possible? Um, I'm honored, uh, first of all. It's also humbling to, you know, look, think about how many guys have come through this organization and um, to be the one that holds those records is, uh, is something I'm, I'm going to hold on to for the rest of my life. And um, no matter if someone else breaks it or not, I can always say that I held it at least for a certain amount of time. And, um, you know, it's very special to me. 
Yeah, yeah it's uh, quite an accomplishment, 500 hits. That's a, that's a lot of hits in a, in a career. Um, so we focused a little bit on what you've done with the Barnstormers. Everybody knows, you know, kind of your legacy here. But uh, another cool fact about you over this past spring, I guess you would say, is that during the World Baseball Classic, you actually got to play for Team Israel. Now, what was that experience like for you? It must have been quite an honor, and, I, and I'm pretty sure I know it is that uh, you got to play in those games. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I could go on for hours about that, but um, it was the best experience of my life, baseball and non-baseball, just an amazing experience. Great group of guys. Um, you know, not all, most of us were American. There were only a couple of guys that were uh, actually born in Israel, um, but it was quite an honor to be able to represent an entire country, an entire culture, an entire heritage. And we got so much of a response from the Israelis and the people. We didn't realize how many people were watching. Um, so it was more than just playing baseball at a super high level, more than just tournament play. It was, you know, putting Israel on the map. Yeah, and the connection was through your dad, right? Uh, yeah, my dad's side of the family's Jewish in heritage. so. We, the, the hardest part was proving it. <laughs> and, you know, realistically, they just needed some, like, documentation that they could <coughs> consider mm -hmm. legitimate. Um, so we were able to find that, and just, um, that was basically it. I'm just curious, you know how far back did the process start Taylor. for you on that? When did that whole thing start? Uh, it started probably three weeks Scott before the, the tournament in Brooklyn, the qualifier. Um, Long story short, the word ball. started going around now about the World Baseball Classic and Team Israel. I started kind of poking my head out to see like if they that. needed outfielders. No. Turned out they did. Um, and so I was able to kind of get the ball rolling there, contacting the right people. And then we found the documentation, and that was kind of the history. What countries uh, did you get to play in? Um, was it just one, or were you kind of all over the place? Well, for the qualifier, we played against Pakistan. So again, well, we actually didn't play against don't. Pakistan, but so Pakistan was in the tournament. Then field. we played against Great Britain and Brazil. Okay. Uh, for the actual 16-team tournament, um, our bracket was our first bracket was Korea, Netherlands, and Chinese Taipei. That was in Seoul, Korea. And then we went to Japan for the second tournament after we won Pool A. And Japan, Netherlands, and um, flanking on the Cuba uh, was the other one. So um, we we played a a really really solid group of teams and we showed pretty well. Yeah, I mean you said you won the pool. I mean was that a surprise for you guys? And what, how did that feel for everybody on the team? Uh, we shocked the world, <laughs> but we didn't. We weren't surprised. We knew how we knew that what we could do. You know, we were kind of the. Uh, I don't know, the darlings of the World Baseball Classic, so Cinderella story, if you want to call it, just because we were all a bunch of scrappy minor leaguers who never really got a chance. There were a couple guys that had their, some big league time, but um, nobody really expected us to do what we did. And, uh, you know, Netherlands probably had the, uh, the sneakiest group of guys. Their whole infielders, their whole infield is basically current major leaguers. And um, we beat them to win the first round. So that was really, really good for us. We had a lot of confidence going into Japan. So that was that favorite game that you played there? Do you have one? I don't really have a favorite. Okay, just the, the whole, whole experience. experience really was, yeah, it was pretty amazing. I mean, if I had to knock it down to one, I would say the one in Japan, even though we lost the game. We're in the Tokyo Dome, 43,000 fans. It's the most I've ever played in front of. Um, I asked our center fielder, Sam Fold, and while we were making a pitching change in like the sixth or seventh inning, I, and he's got nine years major league yeah. yeah. major league experience, I said, Does this, have you ever played in an atmosphere like this? And he said, never. And that's, you know, that says a lot considering where he's been. Um, so that was a really, really special thing. And, um, you know, they were yelling and screaming the entire time we were there. That was their all-star team, and, you know, and we competed with them in that game. So. Um, one of those experiences you can never take away. That's great. And then obviously you get to carry that, all that momentum into the Barnstormers season. You guys are having a pretty good season, have been in first place uh, for most of that. What's, what's kind of the, the, the season looking for you? You know, what are the, what are the, the trajectory for, for Blake Galen? Is it you want to kind of stay here with the Stormers for a while? Or are we heading back up at some point? What would your thoughts? I mean, it's never really my decision. Uh, obviously, this league is, is so great for a lot of different things. You know, um, 
we obviously want to move on in our career. We don't want to be barnstormers for life necessarily because that's not what this league's about. Um, worst case scenario, if I do stay here, I'm very content with that just because this has been a home, mm -hmm. a home for me. Yeah. Um, at the same time, um, there is a part of me that won't be content with that because I know what I know that I want to play at higher levels, whether you know it's you know AAA, the big leagues, Japan, Korea, whatever. Um, so realistically, the reason you play this game is to play at the highest level, and if you know if the opportunity comes about, you take it. If not, you keep grinding. So at no point are we thinking about our last days of baseball could be in a Lancaster Barnstormers uniform? Uh, I don't know if I'd ever start thinking about the last days until they're here. So, um, yeah, I would hope. Uh, you never know, you know, so you just got to try to play each day by day. And, uh, you know, you try to not think too far ahead into the future. All right, well, yeah, obviously you guys are right now are thinking about a third championship for the Lancaster Barnstormers. We appreciate you coming on for another season. I uh, love that story about the Team Israel. I think that's just a great experience for you, and uh, hopefully everyone from that country is really proud of what you guys did. Thanks again for coming on the show. We really appreciate My it. My pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. No problem. And we'll be right back here on Stormers on Deck. Welcome back to Stormers on Deck. Now, the Atlantic League is famous for getting its players signed back to affiliated ball and it was no different for our next interview, Eli Villanueva. His contract was purchased by the Boston Red Sox organization, but before that, Chad Lander sat down with him to talk about his professional career and more. Welcome back to Stormers on Deck, joined now by starting pitcher for the Lancaster Barnstormers, Eli Villanueva. Thanks for joining us on a beautiful sunny day here. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's get right into it. Kind of uh, an interesting journey for you throughout baseball. Um, start at the beginning, after kind of grade school, Tell us a little bit about where you went with your baseball career. Uh, came out of uh, Westminster Academy in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and uh, went down to FIU Panthers. Mm -hmm. Freshman year, was a sophomore starter, weekend starter. Uh, transferred over to Miami Dade Community College, and then transferred and graduated and got drafted out of Florida State in 2008. That must have been pretty cool. Drafted uh, by the Marlins, right, if I'm not mistaken? By the Marlins, yes. Tell me about playing with the Marlins. What was that like being with the, with that big league organization? Uh, it was fun. You know, obviously being hometown, being from Miami, Florida, and obviously being drafted by them is kind of one of those hometown dreams. You know, going to Marlins games and going to their camps and being in that stadium and being able to get drafted by them and uh, was fun. Did you play with any big names down there in the organization that you can kind of shout out or remember? Uh, I mean, there was a few, obviously with, you know, big league camp, you know, you have, uh, or just guys hanging around the clubhouse like Jeff Conine, um, uh, Tony Rojas, uh, you know, Josh Beckett and those guys, Dan Ugla, Hanley Ramirez, all when they're, you know, getting up and they're, when they're going good in their prime. Right near the so, 07 yeah. year. Yeah, okay, cool. And then you said in 2011, you actually debuted in the big leagues? Debut, yes, in, uh, in Philly. I got called up in Philly in June. Yeah, did you get so. did you get the win there at all? No, I just, it was a double header. So I started the uh, matinee of the double header and struggled a little bit in my debut, but other than less, it was fun. It was packed house, sold out crowd. So that's something, uh, that was a good experience. A nice memory, yeah. About how much did you get to pitch up there uh, on the big league? Uh, I had the one day and then uh, got sent back down and basically been fighting to get back up. Cool, so that's the kind of the one big memory there. Yeah. Nice, all right, and then uh, we, we've done some research and it sounds like you do have a home run to your credit, although being a pitcher, is that true? I do, I have several in my oh, minor league okay. career. Yeah. Uh, one notably was in the uh, 2010 double-A championship game against the uh, Tennessee Smokies. So, game-winning home run. We ended up winning the championship that day. Because of your home run? Or? Yes, it was a go-ahead homer. How about that? That had to have been a great, were your, were your teammates putting you on their shoulders or how'd that go? Uh, yeah, it was pretty interesting. So I've come up, coming up to the plate and, you know, I just had a pretty good feeling and, you know, I kind of felt like I was going to hit one. <laughs> Do you hit from the right or the left side? Right side. Okay. So and the guy I hit it off was uh, Andrew Cashner. Oh, he's in the majors right now. Yeah. So we live in, I live in Houston now. And we work out at the same facility in the off season, so sometimes he still gets, he hears about it. I was gonna say, you better let him yeah. know about it. Yeah, that's really cool. All right, so now we fast forward, and uh, you're here 
in Lancaster. First time playing with the Barnstormers? First time, yes. Um, what has your experience been like coming here to play in Lancaster? Uh, you know, it's it's been good so far. You know, I've heard some things of independent ball and, uh, you know, they treat you well. Obviously, the main goal is to feed players back in into uh, minor league affiliates. And, uh, you know, they do a really good job here. What uh, What's it been like kind of under first year manager Ross Peoples. He does kind of have a pitching background, so has that at all been in your favor a little bit? It has. So coming off of Tommy John, I had Tommy John in March of 2016. So when I spoke with uh, Ross and got contacted, it was one of those things where, you know, him being a former pitcher and manager, uh, and him going through Tommy John as well, uh, being able to kind of lean on him and with different experiences and uh, kind of guiding me through like the early or mid stages of the rehab, uh, it's been good so far. Nice, and you guys have had some success here now as we're moving through the season. What's that been like? What's what's the team uh, the team chemistry and the team morale been like now that you guys have jumped into first place and have enjoyed that for a while? Uh, I think the team morale is pretty good. You know, I feel like we go out every day and you know with a loose atmosphere and kind of that we know we're gonna win. You know, we kind of even if we're down early, we've. You know, we've had pretty good stat numbers in the 6th, 7th, 8th inning up, putting up runs. So, you know, we're not afraid to play long games. Uh, you know, I think our average is about just over three hours. Uh, but it's good. You know, everybody's in the game uh, to the last out. You know, that's all you can hope for. Do you have any fun superstitions that kind of uh, have stuck with you throughout your pitching career? Uh, Any no, routines, not, maybe? Yeah, I made just a routine, just kind of game day routine, you know, just kind of before and making sure everything's on the time, on the Tommy clock, and, uh, on the you know, sometimes you feel like you get rushed and, and you get out there and then you find out you have plenty of time, so you kind of, you know, but other than that, you know, I'm pretty Man, easy going. Any foods you like to eat on, on a day that you'll start? Uh, for the most part, it's just a big breakfast. Okay. So I like to eat a big breakfast and then nothing the rest of the day. So it's almost like I pitch on an empty stomach. Right. For some reason, I feel better that you way. You like that? I feel lighter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, are you living here in Lancaster? Kind of what's the situation there for you? I am. I'm living in Leola with the host family. Uh, Barnstormers do a good job of, uh, you know, providing players with host families and, you know, people around the community to help and make things easier. And, uh, you know, it's good so far. You know, being able to travel around the city, you know, get to know the city. So it's been good. Northeast a little different than down in Florida for you? Yes, down in Florida and from Houston. So it's okay. still trying to get used to the cold weather a little bit. <laughs> I'm hoping for it to warm up here soon. It will. As the summer goes on, it will. Well, really appreciate you coming on the show. First timer here for us. Loved hearing your story. And uh, have fun the rest of the season here with the Barnstormers. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, that'll do it with uh, Eli. We'll be back right after the break with more on Stormers on Deck. Welcome back to Stormers on Deck. One more order of business before we go. The answer to our did you know question from earlier in the show. We asked you if you knew who holds the Barnstormers record for most RBI in a single game. Well, the answer, former Stormer great Aaron Hur. He drove in seven runs back on June 3rd, 2009 at the Somerset Patriots. But for now, that will do it for our season two premiere of Stormers on Deck. We will be back soon with another trio of Lancaster Barnstormers. But until then, I'm Brian Cast. We'll see you at the ballpark.